Well, hi there, everyone. It's been a long time since we said hello. So, Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, and then Happy New Year to everyone. I am in the middle of doing a wonderful project, which I'll tell you about in a second. But I wanted to um, just touch base with you so that we can be in concert with our purpose as we move forward into 2021. Can you believe that? This year has been unreal. And I think we are all very happy to see 2020 go. And the, those orange people in the White House, we, we are very happy to see them go also because uh, it's been a torturous year. This last year has been unbelievable with COVID-19 and all the political nonsense and drama that we've been going through. So I'm right with you. I have your same sentiments and uh, we will do as we always do. We will pray ourselves through the whole thing. <laughs> so today I want to just discuss with you two charities that I normally do during Kwanzaa. A lot of people don't celebrate Kwanzaa and that's quite all right. That's your choice. But just a reminder about what Kwanzaa is. Some people think that it, you have to choose between Christmas and Kwanzaa. You do not. Remember, it's all connected. Jesus, whom, whose birth we celebrate on Christmas, was a black man. What other way for us to extend that time than to celebrate Kwanzaa, a celebration of our culture, our traditions, our beliefs, and our basic principles, which have been handed down for generations and generations. You must remember, Jesus is the son of the creator, and we are the descendants. We are the descendants of the original man. When God said, let there be man, a black man appear and remember he also said he made man after his likeness so we must connect all the dots don't just pick out one or two here and there from things that you've been taught through this um, very controlled educational system that we have it's important that you connect the dots to your heredity back to first man which is our ancestors, the oldest person who has ever been discovered on this earth is black. And we are the guardians of the universe because, and we are the guardians of this planet. We must remember the charge and read Genesis. Please read Genesis over and over and over again until you get the idea. Because it explains to you the covenant that our Creator made with Adam. And then the trauma that happened with the biting of the apple and the whole Eve episode with the snake and all that stuff. All that's relevant, but let's move on. <laughs> we must remember that Kwanzaa celebrates the birth of Christ as well as the birth of of that first man. And we do that by celebrating the principles that that Kwanzaa highlights, which are rich in our tradition. And I'll just give you a two. I won't give you the African pronunciation for them because I'm not that good at Swahili. But let's start with the first one is unity. Why wouldn't you want to celebrate unity? Okay, self-development. That is very important because everything starts with you. So develop yourself and then we all can move. And then we go on to collective responsibility. And these baby quilts behind me is a perfect example of collective responsibility where my I have asked friends of mine, my church members, people in my community to help me make quilts, uh, not quilts, <laughs> crochet blankets and this year for infants in the intensive care units that we donate to hospitals all over the city. 
Now I have two because they're right in my neighborhood that I insist on doing first and that's Einstein Hospital and Temple University because they're right here in my community and we have to take care of, of our own first and the majority of the children born in those places are black children. So we want to make sure that we connect with that, let these people know, let our people know that we are there for them, we pray with them, and we're with them no matter what. They are not alone. That's our responsibility as far as um, what we owe our community and what we do to connect with our community. You can do that. And another example of what you can do for your community is, uh, and I'll give you the ones that I do, this is one, and then I also collect diaries, just blank books here. I get them at the dollar store, and I give them to children at the Juvenile Justice Center. It's just blank pages, but I encourage writing because I'm a writer, and remember, we were the first scribers of the world. We invented the process of writing and uh, we must never forget that we own this we own this so let no one tell you that you cannot write because it's in your genes it's in your history and it belongs to us uh, i also give out little booklets like this these are little tablets and i like them because they have little cute sayings on the on the front of them it says be unique extraordinary punctual silly responsible sincere, humble, wise, and happy. Those are on here. And then um, when I can, I find some really complicated coloring books that I can give to our teenagers because the group I deal with our teenagers ages 13 to 18, they're incarcerated youth that have been taken from our community and placed in prison. So we must let these children know that we do not forget them. That's when we are doing that. Now, let's go on to my, my blankets that I do for our, our infants in intensive care units. Um, here's, I put them in little plastic bags like this. These are gallon size bags. And I also put in a little note to let them know who I am and the purpose of me doing this. And I'm gonna tell you the story about this, which is really cute. Uh, this is Operation Baby Blankets. And all we do is to, I don't collect any money for these. I do collect volunteers to help me uh, crochet blankets or quilt blankets or sew blankets, we do it all. So we do it, we all do it at our own expense. Like I said, I don't collect money. We are not one of those um, charities that that are 501c3 because this is a grassroots project and each person do what they can on their own budget from their own grocery list if they must. And uh, we just do this for the babies. They're infants. Most of them are preemies in the, uh, the neonatal planets throughout the city. Uh, and we do all sizes. We have some children who are admitted to the intensive care unit because they have illnesses throughout their infancy up until I think they take them up until like one or two years old or something like that. But the majority of them are premature babies. And we have more premature babies today than we've ever had before. So this is something that we must do. So what I do is put a little note in here telling them who we are. And, and some of the people that I've uh, worked with to make this possible this year, and this year is my church, which is Oak, Lan Oak Lane Presbyterian Church, and um, Oak Lane Community Action Association, which is our neighborhood association. Dr. Siddiqui Shebae, who is an author, also a very dear friend of mine, who has taken on the challenge of uh, transporting these blankets and he also paid for these uh, flyers, things like that, publicity, anything we need, he does that. He also buys the bag and all the paraphernalia we need to put these blankets in. But, and then we have a, another friend, Joan Clerk. She was very important this year because she gave us tons of yarn. I mean, like a whole... <laughs> 
carload full of yarn, which we used to make these blankets, and we made out very well this year. We, it, was, it was hardly any expense to either, either one of us. I know I made out like a bandit. I also gave some of that yarn because there was so much of it. I can't store it all in my house. I gave it to one of the nursing homes, which is called Laurel Square, which is not too far, right behind my church. So uh, thank you, Joan. Thank you, Dr. Siddiqui Chebae. And to the uh, Oak Lane Community Action Association, I thank you. And also uh, Oak Lane Presbyterian Church, which is uh, my church. And... Uh, they have been wonderful in helping to support this project. We, uh, uh, we do this because of an incident that happened to me about 15 years ago. A friend of mine, a young woman that was raised in, a, in the agency that I used to work with, with Catholic Social Services, had an infant named Kena Jones. She was born premature, and I sat with her mother in that uh, neonatal clinic, neonatal ward, it's not a clinic, it's at the hospital at Einstein, uh, from, for two months, going every day to hold this baby, caress this baby, talk to this baby, and to connect with her. It was a very tiring uh, process because it was going back and forth. As anyone knows, when you have someone in the hospital, you go there all the time. Anyway, a woman that we did not know, we were told she was an elderly woman, she, uh, sent us a blanket pretty much like this one. It was much smaller because Kano was very small. Uh, she gave it to us, and uh, it turned out to be the only possession that that baby had. The mother kept it as a keepsake for her child. So that's the only thing she had. The child died at two months old. So when the nurse told me that this woman was elderly and would probably not be able to do this wonderful deed for parents who were having difficulty um, with their children being served in this hospital because it's very, very difficult on the parents. I've seen them and it's a very difficult thing that they go through when they sit by the bedside of their achy, their ailing child to give them support. And having a blanket like this is very comforting because usually if you bring your child into the hospital to get some emergency treatment, you don't remember to bring a blanket with you. So the nurses at the hospital with these blankets are able to give it to the parents, which is really wonderful. And uh, it helps to ease uh, some of the problems that they're having, like giving their child warmth and affection and a nice sweet blanket. It's such a great idea. We also give them little teeny hats. Can you believe that little head that goes in there? It's really cool, isn't it? And they're all different colors. We have them in uh, blue and the pink and different different colors. And we put them in these little teeny bags and uh, provide them for the children. So that's the uh, service that we provide. On a Sometimes I do it twice a year. This year is only able to do it once a year because of the COVID crisis. Um, so we'll be giving these out to two different hospitals. Now, right now we have, I think I counted up to 160 blankets that we're donating this year. So um, I ask you in your community to do something similar because it's needed in every city. We need to be in touch with our people who are in need, whether they are children, teenagers, or infants like these little babies. So that's something for you to think about and to work on because you don't need to always give to other charities. Sometimes you can create your own like I did in these two instances. I put my time in the areas where I'm most passionate. I, it bothers me that our children are incarcerated at such an early age and they spend their early years, their precious teenage years behind bars. So what could I do about that? I go there. I give them talks, lectures, whatever, 
I encourage them to write. I sit with them and help them write if they need that. And I leave these these uh, these diaries and notebooks for them to use to write poetry. They like to do the um, wrapping so they can write that out and uh, organize it. And also, if they're interested in publishing, I will help them do that too. Because everybody, all our children, all of you <laughs> can write because we're the originators. We're the original storytellers of the world. So we need to embrace our history and our heritage. And that's what Kwanzaa is all about, is teaching us to appreciate who and what we are. So that's really, really critical. And I want to uh, just invite you to be bold enough to get out and do that. All right? So uh, this is just one of the things that we are doing this year. Um, and just for you to remember, I just made a couple of notes here because I think it's very important for our community, for us to stress this year because of the systematic racism and the violence against our people, we need to stand together. We need to establish a common purpose so that we can all work towards the same thing. Now we have a new president coming in, thank the creator for that and our ancestors for looking after us as we go through this, this process and this transitional period. And we pray that January 5th will be the day that the Senate will honor our requests as voters and accept those uh, votes for our new president and vice president. But once they're in office, your work is not done. It's time for you to continue writing, continue demonstrating any way you choose to do that. Um, write letters and demand that systematic racism end quickly, that we get justice under the law. We are not interested in integration anymore because that's, it does not solve our problem. Going, riding on a bus with somebody is not an, an issue. We need justice under the law, and we also need equality so that we can go to a bank and make a loan to operate a business or to buy a home or whatever we need to do. There should not be this racial divide in this country, and we need to do everything we can to make sure that happens. So this is something that I would like to put out there. The next thing, and especially being a woman, we have to do is to strengthen our family structure. Make sure we keep our men and our boys and our girls at home. Do not, do not spend time tearing each other apart, complaining and what, and um, telling each other what they're not doing or to criticize each other. Do not use vulgar language towards your children or your spouse or your partner. Be very, very active in giving out positive feedback so that they can learn and hear the fact that they are brilliant people. They must learn from you. We women are the nurturers and we need to do our job. We need to do our job and take care of that. Keep our families together no matter what. It's really critical. So this year, I would like to see us come together for that purpose, to strengthen our families and to help us imagine the future we can have for our families and for our children. Think about businesses, businesses that you can go into and where we can support ourselves rather than buy purses and objects that, that are made by other people. Normally they're different <laughs> designed by us, but sold with somebody else's name on it. But we need to concentrate our efforts on what we do for ourselves. So spend this year building the family structure. It's absolutely critical. And I thank you so much for your attention and for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to like this program, okay? I will be back on a regular basis starting next year, but I wanted to stop a moment from all the things that I'm doing, the publishing cause, and the writing books and all of that. Everything is gonna be coming to fruition very soon. 
and we'll be doing back on our regular schedule of doing these weekly uh, talks with you. I missed it a lot, but there are things that must be done first, and these books must get out. You have to remember, I've written 20, and I have friends who are writing books, and those books need to be published. And I have a sister, God bless her. Her first book is coming out very soon, and it's going to be a real doozy, Miss Odessa Hargrove Huff. And uh, I'm looking forward to initiating that and bringing her on board as a, as a published author. My dear friend, uh, Dr. Siddiqui Chebaye, it, he is publishing his third book. And I will be helping him with that process. So um, I'm very pleased. This is an, at, at his new book because it challenges us to be ourselves and to go into our hearts and our minds. And our minds. You're always talking about your mind. <laughs> go into our minds and pull out those ancestors, that ancient history, those ancient um, heroes that lived so many thousands of years ago and stand on their shoulders as we move forward in this world. So I want to congratulate Dr. Baye and my sister Odessa on their accomplishments and look, I look forward to doing that. I also have another project. I have a, a dear cousin who is in Arizona. He's a Buffalo soldier. <laughs> so is Dr. Uh, Baye also. But uh, my, my cousin Chaz is going to do his life story. And the reason he's doing it is because he was instrumental in getting Elijah Mays, who was a Buffalo soldier, getting his remains moved from Arizona to Arlington Cemetery. We'll have to tell you the story about uh, uh, Elijah Mays. But if you want to, Google it, because the story about my cousin moving those remains to Washington, D.C., to the National Cemetery is all uh, on the internet. So you can look it up. And the Buffalo Soldiers in Arizona is his group that he created. And I want you to um, read his work, read Dr. Baye's book, and read my sister Odessa. And of course, you've got to read mine. <laughs> And that will be out soon. Okay, so it's been wonderful. It's been a very uh, different year for all of us, but we are strong. We can survive. Please use all your intelligence and all your love and respect for yourself. First of all, wear a mask. I don't, uh, I'm not advocating people taking that medication, the injections or whatever. That's not my thing. Because I'm a naturalist, I believe in herbal medicines, and I believe in using what God gave us to build our immunity. Nobody talks about building your immunity to fight viruses, but the Creator does. So, read Genesis. <laughs> it's all in there, okay? Now, I want you to have a wonderful, wonderful New Year coming up, and Happy Kwanzaa. Take care of yourselves and let's take care of our community and build trust between each other. Let's be uh, more active in embracing who and what we are. And let's stand on that magnificent history. Remember, we were the first astrologists. We were the first um, scientists. We were the first doctors surgeons, I mean, you name it, it all came from us. And we have documents to prove it now. Out of Temple 2, there are thousands and thousands of documents, ancient documents that are being displayed that shows and proves that point. So let's do this. Let's put our bodies and souls into our heritage and let's make that real today for ourselves and for our children. It's critical. So you guys take care. Um, if you feel like it, do some blankets for the children in your area. It's a wonderful project and it will be appreciated. So um, happy Kwanzaa, happy new year, and God bless you. Take care. I love you.